came to Iceland, tasked through uh, USAFE and UCOM to come out and support, uh, basically support our allies in the uh, the region. So we're out here. We are flying with our, uh, you know, United Kingdom and Norway, and then on the redeploy trip, also be uh, working with the Canadians, continuing to build on uh, tactics that we have between the countries and just our how we integrate together with the B2, F-35, Eurofighter Typhoon, as well as some F-15s out of Lake and Heath. Truthfully, I was worried a little bit early on. It's not the best weather in Iceland, so there's uh, 52 degrees, sometimes the wind's blowing 35 miles an hour, it rains pretty much every day, and the jets are gonna be sitting outside the whole time, so there were some, there were some worries about how they're gonna do in that type of weather, just continuously not being inside a hangar. Maintenance has crushed it. We haven't lost a uh, single sortie due to a uh, aircraft issue. Flying's been great. We've had to fight the weather, but it's made, uh, it's made us work a little bit, getting in and out. To actually get to Iceland was, was a fairly large muscle movement to move three B-2s and they associated almost about 186 people is what we took out on this one. But we don't necessarily travel light. There's a lot of support equipment that goes along, especially in a place where it's pretty bare bones. So we had a combat comm support team come in from USAFE that combined with our own uh, comm elements from back at Whiteman did an awesome job. Our LARS team is obviously key to getting all that done. So can't move any of that stuff without LRS getting all the uh, airlift and everything put together and kind of scheduling that and unpacking it once we get here and getting it set up. And then once the people arrived, our medical team was really busy getting everybody in, getting them tested, tracking the testing, and making sure everyone was cleared, good to go, healthy before we could even step foot on base. One of my favorite things about any TDY we go on is how integrated everyone is together. Uh, get to go out, we get to, to help with all sorts of different inspections, refuels, get to do everyone else's job, and, and you learn a big picture from that. We've helped with crew chiefs, we've helped with AR, we help with everybody anywhere we can. Sometimes we get shooed away, uh, but most of the time we're, everyone's happy to have a couple extra hands. We've led a couple BTFs prior to this. Uh, this is the first time B2s have ever done continuous ops out of Iceland. So that's pretty big. Uh, there had been a hot pit in 2019. Uh, so now it's being on the ground here for multiple weeks. Not something they usually deal with. There haven't been bombers here for, for a long time. Yeah, the TFI aspect of this is huge. So again, 131st lead. Uh, so great to be able to you know, get the experience and pass that experience on both to active duty and guard. Guard and active duty pilots. We've got guard and active maintainers. So pick a shop, and there's a there's a guardsman and a uh, active duty person there. So tons of experience in the 131st, and it's good to use that experience to, you know, to get out, teach some of the uh, younger folks with their guard or active duty, um, and be able to uh, to accomplish a mission like this. It builds a lot of unit self-esteem, if you will, to uh, to be able to show that you handle some uh, pretty big tasks and doing pretty well. Everything has gone very smoothly. So our, everyone has, uh, has pulled their weight and got their job done, and it's been great.